So. Well, buddy, first question will come from Sean Cunningham over here. Bet. What's up, man? What's up, man? You okay? Good, yeah. How about you? Great. Yeah. Um, we didn't get a – we were kind of talking amongst people in here. It's like we didn't really get a chance to talk to you a whole lot last year. Did Was, was last year difficult for you at all? And how has things kind of changed to where you are today? I mean, that, that show is different in a lot of ways, but, you know, you just got to learn how to adjust in life. And it's, it's, you have to learn how to adjust in life and move forward. And uh, no matter what situation you're in, you just got to learn how to adjust and figure things out. So it's a professional sport, man. You, you know, no complainings. Yeah. We asked the same question to Marvin, well, at least I did, a few minutes ago. But, um, you know, you can't help what's in the in the press and, and seeing your name attached to every trade rumor out there. And then here you are in Sacramento today. Is there any part of you that's a little surprised to be sitting here today? Yeah, they love me in That's why I'm still here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, man, it's, it's, business, it's the business we live in. Uh, each and every day you get a company that compete and uh, guys get moved, guys don't get moved. Uh, yeah, I saw it, but I can't control none of that, you know. And uh, like I said, this is the business we live in, you know. Uh, my job is to come in and work my butt off every day and produce and try to uh, produce wins. And uh, I can't get mad at that. And then, uh, you know, I get paid lots, lots and lots of money to do this, so uh, I'm blessing each every day to come out here and compete. And uh, I love to be around my guys. Uh, you know, I love the team camaraderie share and all that. You know, the coaching staff has been great. You know, it's been fun. You know, so I mean, I love it. You know, when, whatever happens, happens. I can't control that, but uh, my job is to go out there and play basketball, and uh, I love to do it at a high level. Next, we'll go to Matt George. Hey, buddy, you've started for this team. You've come off the bench uh, for this organization before. Does that matter to you uh, really at all? And do we overblow the optics of that sometimes starting versus coming off the bench? I mean, it's the way, I, it's the way you see it. You know, everybody sees it differently. Uh, I mean, my job is to come in and play basketball. And uh, whatever I'm called to do, I got to be ready to do it regardless, if I like it or not. Uh, and that's just the sport of being a professional. Just go out there and compete. And, uh you know, things happen, things changes, but uh, my guard is a, be a starter every time I come on the court, regardless of uh, whatever the team needs me to do or whatever team situation I'm in, I got to be prepared for that. So it's fun, you know, uh, to get around and adjust, like I said earlier to Sean, just adjusting to whatever you got to do. What's up, buddy? Sarah Hodges. Um, how do you think this roster's improved from last season, and what are you most excited about? I mean, you know, you're just excited. I'm, I'm excited just to like see where everybody's at mentally, you know, where everybody's goal is, you know, uh, coming in training camp. You know, we all say we want to win, but we just got to go out there and just really show it, you know, and want it and uh, just put down all the personal reasons behind us and then just come together as a team and just figure it out. And uh, that's our biggest goal, just figuring it out. And uh, um, we got the pieces, and, you know, we have, we have scoring, we have shooting, you know, we just got to put it together and pay attention to the little details. So just got to figure it out. And that's been the f frustrating part about this group because we, we got guys that are capable of doing it, but just got to figure it out. From what you guys, the work that you guys have put in so far, which I know is little, do you see that improving? Do you see the chemistry building? I mean, it's off season. So you got you to build it during training camp. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys ain't working out together, but sometimes different lineups. So you just got to figure it out, and, you know, and just you know, do what's best for the team, not what's best for myself or – Everybody else, um, or just thinking like, oh, this game, I got to do this. No, it's just what's best for the team. So just trying to figure it out. G-Man. Hey, buddy, in terms of your individual growth as you go through the years in the NBA, what do you specifically work on leading into this season to try to be better? What category? And are you a goal setter as, a, as an individual? Yes, for sure. Uh, last year, like you know, my, my my goals didn't. I set a lot of goals last year. I didn't really get to my goals, but uh, to sum, I work hard on my body and keeping it in shape. You know, uh, just being more fit and uh, staying locked in on the certain details of my body and just I say coming in between the camp more shape and being ready to perform at a high level. And uh, yeah, of course, I set goals to myself and I keep them to myself. But uh, you know, just the thing this year is like a motivating year for me to. Uh, Take a, I take a big step. For me, I took a big step drop. My field goal percentage is down. My three point percentage is down. So I take a big drop in that. So I'm just it's more motivating this year. That uh, like I say, I always have something to prove. You know, the league there's something to prove. There's always young guys coming. So there's always new talent that that's very appealing to the league. But uh, 
as an older player, you got to go there and show them why you still belong in the league and you got to play at a high level because if you don't do that, they try to mark you and uh, you don't really mark as a certain type of guy. So it's, it's always more. That's the beauty of the game. You got to motivate each other and you see the older guys uh, like CP of the Worlds and like just, you know, he's 37, 36, but he's playing a high level in the finals and uh, he's contributing big. So, so just... Watching those guys and seeing those guys doing that there at that level, and me being 28, I say, yo, it's still a lot left in the tank, and uh, just trying to, trying to prove myself each and every day as I go on the court. And that's obviously every every player in the league does trying to prove themselves. Thank you, James Ham. Yeah, buddy, we talked to Luke, and he said that he's had conversations with you about what's expected, where you're where you're going to play, you know, the type of role that you might have. Just you can see how many guards his team has. Did you? concentrate sort of on maybe getting bigger and stronger to play a little bit more wing this year um, or just was it your standard off season? No, just whatever they call me to do, I just got to do and just, you just got to, and if I'm, if I'm playing a bigger wing world, I just get, like I say, adjust and toughen up and uh, do what they tell me that I need to do. And I, I know, like, the topic of, dis of discussion around the league today is vaccinations, not vaccination. I know you're a guy who I think you've missed three games total in your career. Just how much does that play in your mind when it comes to whether you're vaccinated or not and, and you know, how you think of that process? And especially you go to Golden State and you couldn't play in a game at this point or New York. I, I, thought, I thought that the players and Golden State couldn't play in the game. I didn't thought the play players who were – the players who are in market couldn't play games. That's what I thought. No, like if, oh well, visiting team. You're right. You might not be not have to miss. So yeah, it's just, I think that that's Golden State rule. I don't think that's a visit team rule. Same thing as New York. Yeah, I just help you out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I think every player should have the right to do whatever is best for them, and uh, whatever they believe in, that's their rights. You know, uh, yeah, COVID came around, but. You know, if you, if you feel better not being unvaccinated, then you should be back unvaccinated, and then you should just go to the protocol the leagues want you to do to team playing. And I think that's, like I said, adjusting to something new, and uh, the league got to respect the players. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of, like, high-level players that don't really want to get vaccinated. So you know, the league has to respect that because, you know, when we signed these contracts and stuff, they didn't say that you had to be vaccinated to play basketball. So I think they, the league should respect those players' protocol, um, situations where they or what they believe in. And uh, we, we as players just got to follow the protocol to do that, to play. Tony Harvey. Hey, buddy. Um, just wanted to ask you, you've been here, what, almost four seasons, three and a half seasons, four seasons? And, five, and, you know, five, five and a half. Okay, <laughs> I, sh I should know better. Thank you for the correction. Are no, you good. Uh, That's why I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just, you know, it, and each year, you know, uh, the Kings uh, come up short on the playoffs. Uh, just want to know, you know, does that, I'm pretty sure it does, you know, where the motivation level is, you know, to try to break that curse to push this organization over that hump. And, and how do you approach that? Is that, you know, some of your, some of your thoughts that, you know, uh, that's been lingering around in your mind you know, going into this season as too. There's something that you really want to do since you, since you've been here. What's your approach on that? Yeah, my approach is as as it's always been, and just try to get the Sacramento Kings to playoffs. You know, uh, whether fans might not see it or not, you know, just being our approach. You know, and uh, we show signs, but we figure it out, and then we yes. show signs where we don't figure it out. You know, we drop way back off. We win seven in a row, then yeah. we lose seven in a row. So. I think if it's the biggest this team, just focus on the little details and then just lock it in. Yeah, if you drop two, no matter if it's Golden State, Brooklyn, figure out how to win that third one. You know, just getting back on track and don't get distracted to who's playing or who's next and, uh, on the roster and just lock in and uh, figure it out. Whatever you got to do is just win, game, win the game. And uh, and that's big, you know, especially if you're doing a young group that somebody, and uh, we don't have that much bad, just capable of like, putting on our backs, so, like, yo, that's how you win. But, just getting how to figure it out and then just pay attention to little details that can help us win and close those games, you know, because we all make mistakes and we're not perfect, you know. And uh, I don't think it's a lot of pressure. We just got to figure out as a group and come collectively as one and uh, figure out how to win games. And uh, when it's going bad, figure out how to turn it to good. And my last question, and real quick, because I've heard this uh, response, the same response from like Harrison and De'Aaron, you guys, you know, talk about to break that, 
you know, break through that uh, through that curse to, you know, get in the postseason play as a team? I mean, that's everybody's just go. I if you if you're not you don't want to play in the postseason, I don't know why you're playing. Uh Nobody wants to be in this play regular season basketball. Basketball. I don't want to play regular season basketball the rest of my life in the NBA. So we've been motivated each and every day. So myself alone, I'm trying to get the postseason. It sucks watching other teams in the postseason. Take a couple more for Buddy. Mark Dembski. Hey, Buddy. How you doing, man? What's up, man? You talk a lot about figuring it out as players, and, yeah. and that's what your job is to do. What's different, though, with this group? And I know you're just getting started with, with some of these guys, but as you look at this group, what, what's different, and, and what will make the difference, do you think, with this group? I mean, we got a lot of new play, play, places. You know, we got faces that have been with us before. We got Alex just before. And, I, you know, we got really – a league guard we just drafted, you know. So when I say figure it out, just figure out how we all can play at a high level together. And and us coming together. And Tristan, he's been on championship teams before, and he's been on a lot of experience. So just them using the experience and uh, and putting it together and just figuring out how we can be a playoff team, whereas a six, seven, eight C team, or try to get to the play on playing game, whatever this team is at. So we just got to come together and uh, play for each other, and that's what I'm figuring out just to get to that point where we, where we haven't been as yet. Do you see those pieces here that uh, different than, than in years past for you? I mean, we have a league guard. He's a rookie, so he has adjusted the league and everything, but he's really good. And you have guys like Tristan and uh, Alex that have played at a high level for a long time. Tristan's been in multiple finals. Alex has been in multiple playoffs before. So we have the guys, but we just get to put it together and uh we know we have Harrison's elite wing so we just gotta figure it out. Thank you. Yes, sir. Last th- last three guys. Jason Anderson. Buddy love, good to see you man. Man, why are you not here? You're not vaccinated? I guess not. <laughs> Shit, I because am because they, they, they keep buddy. asking you a vaccination question like you're not vaccinated because you're not inside the building. Are you vaccinated? No. I, I am vaccinated. I'll be in the building tomorrow. Just Yeah, because you, you gotta be vaccinated because why you I see you you report everything. First, yeah, first hand. They told me I couldn't come see you in person unless wow, I Wow, and you still with this black screen, right? What happened? Man, I'm, I'm good. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Hey, uh, you know, uh, following up on a couple of these other questions, you there was one day in particular you were... Buddy, you, you were up, real G? close to, to becoming a Laker, man, that one day. What what was that day like for you? And then just, you know, all this other – Yeah, Tristan said, what, what kind of question was that? Was that? <laughs> well, I you were real close to being day, – Day one of training camp, Buddy Heald is wearing a Sacramento Kings jersey. Um, that's where his mind and focus is at. He's going to have a stellar year. I'm going to set him some great wide pin downs to get him open. So, you know, that's his mindset right now. What's in the past is in the past. You cannot control that. When you look in the rear view, that's when you crash. We look forward and ahead. What he said, bro. All right. That was a good answer, buddy. Uh, moving <laughs> on. Um, Luke did say he's had some really good conversations with you about what he wants, what he needs. Uh, what were those conversations like from your view? And then uh, to follow up on, on James's question earlier, do you, do you expect to play a little bit more three this year? I mean, well, uh, me and Luke, well, me and Luke, had, we keep that in house. But uh, you know, we, we had a good conversation. But yeah, if I have to play three, I have to play three. That's how I say just adjusting to my role and whatever the team needs me to do, and just figuring it out and uh, uh, being the player they need me to be. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. My right, guy. Mm-hmm. Go to Matt George. He's not vaccinated, huh? He's lying. <laughs> well, buddy, I can kind of tell this based off of what just happened with Tristan, but um, uh, Tyrese Halliburton and De'Aaron Fox both shared that building relationships has been a focus of theirs this off season. Has that been a focus of yours as well? And, and how have those relationships formed with these uh, new guys here in Sacramento? Oh, my name is Buddy. It's not hard to make a friend around here, so <laughs> I'm everybody's friend. We good? Uh, Jim Conlon. Hi, buddy. Uh, Just one quick one for me to you. Uh, I spoke to Luke Walton last year, and he came up with a famous quote uh, and answer he gave me. He said, if I'm going to the roulette table and the game's on the line and I've got my last chips, I want the dice in buddy's hands. 
how confidence does that give you as a player when your coach has that belief in you that when everything's on the line, he wants the ball in your hands to take that shot? I'm a good shooter. I don't miss. Nah, we just messing with you. But uh, no, it's Luke. Uh, I mean, I mean, Luke have good talks, and uh, like Luke know my mind says that, and I work hard, and uh, he trusts me a lot to make a lot of shots, and uh, even shots where I think it's impossible to make, he gives me the confidence to do that. And uh, as a coach, you want to have a guy like that that's riding your back, and I was always on you. So, you know, I respect the respect level is there. So, uh, and like I say, he had a lot of confidence in me. So, uh, as a player, you know, uh, I had the confidence to take the shot. Whatever he draws up, I'm ready to do. And finally, uh, buddy, uh, just one thing. I suppose you're repping for the people of the Barbados, Bahamas. Bahamas, Bahamas, that. Bahamas. Come Bahamas. on, man. Bahamas. Bahamas. How important is that that you're like a cult figure for your home sort of country and did you inspire a next generation of players to appear in the NBA? Uh, you know, uh, it's really good. To, uh, knowing I came from the Bahamas and just being – in the NBA and uh, just seeing the guys like DeAndre Ayton coming up and now uh, you have Kai Jones who just get drafted from uh, Charlotte Hornets. You know, it was really inspirational. And like, yeah, I look like a big bro to them, but uh, but uh, it's just motivating the, the, the other little kids like, to keep on pushing. You know, it's hard, you know, like, like guy like Tristan from Canada, there was a lot of, not a lot of Canadians in the league. You know, you got a, about 20 Canadians in the league now and they're playing at a high level. So our job is, me, DeAndre Aiden, and uh, Kai Jones keep on inspiring the young kids to keep on believing that they can play in the league and one day they can be like us and uh, be able to help other people and inspire the youth coming up for sure. Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir.